Hello and welcome to another tutorial where today I'm going to be showing you how to use Scratch to find all of the prime numbers. Well, maybe not all of the prime numbers, but certainly a selection of them. So for example, I can type in the program, I could type 500 and after a few seconds, it's going to return all of the prime numbers between 2 and 500 and all of the numbers that are not prime. Let's get to it. <laughs> So right off the bat, I want to explain that this is a more advanced uh, way of using Scratch. Uh, it's not really difficult, but it's certainly more difficult than the basics. You're going to be using lists, you're going to be using looping, and you're going to be using some mathematics, obviously, in there as well. Now, how this is going to work, so I'm going to try and draw this out for you. We are going to loop through two lists. We're going to start off with a list that's empty, and that list is going to start being filled with prime numbers. So here's my list of prime numbers, and over here is a list of not prime numbers. Each time we run through the program, it's going to start at this number. So we've got a, a number that we start with. So let's say we have uh, the number 8, run number 8, and it looks at this number, and it says, okay, what's 8 divided by 2? 8 divided by 2 is 4, and it has no remainder. So that means, because there's no remainder, because the remainder equals 0, that means it must be added to not prime. Then it will go on to 9, and it will say 9 divided by 2, oh, that has a remainder. Okay, so I'll try the next one. 9 divided by 3, oh, that didn't have a remainder, so 9 must not be prime. 10. 10 divided by 2. 10 divided by 2 leaves no remainder. It goes into exactly 5. So 10 must not be prime. And then we can take on 11. And I should have 7 on here, shouldn't I? So 11 goes on and it says 11 divided by 2. Okay, that, no remainder. Oh, that one does have a remainder. So we carry on. 11 divided by 3. That does have a remainder. 11 divided by 5, oh, that does have a remainder. 11 divided by 7, that does have a remainder. So it gets to the end and it says, well, I've tried them all, and every single one of them had a remainder, so 11 must be prime. So that's how this program is going to work. Okay, so now we kind of understand how this is going to work. We're going to make two variables. The first variable is our number to check. In the slides, I call this a counter one, but I think we're going to call it a number to check to make it a bit easier. And this is going to be called counter, the second one. And we're going to have two lists. So that's what we want to end up with, two lists. The first list is going to be called primes. And the second list is going to be called not prime. So let's create the sorting algorithm. Now, the counter will make sense in a second. But first of all, I'm going to set counter to zero. And I'm also going to set the number to check to three. We're going to start from number three, which means we just need to add in two. So we're going to go to add two, two primes. Okay, so when we click the green flag, we get the first number. First prime number is two. We know that that's a prime number. And we could have added a few more in, but I just want to start with two because it helps the process along. And, ho and hopefully you'll be able to see how this works. All right. We're going to repeat this a number of times because we want to loop through as many numbers as possible. So we're going to repeat until, and we're going to say repeat until the number to check is equal to whatever your target number is. Later on, I'll show you how we can easily change that to something else. But let's start with 50. Let's keep it nice and simple. So repeat until the number to check gets to 50. And let's do some of our logic now. So we need another repeat, and I'll explain what's going on here in a second. So repeat until counter equals the length of the prime list. So basically what we're saying here, we want to repeat whatever's in this block until the number on this counter matches how long this primes list is. And you'll see why that is in a second. All right. Then we need an if else. So we can drop an if and else in here. And this is where it gets quite long. So I'm going to pull out all the things that I need and try and explain them to you. So we're going to need a mod, uh, which I'll explain in a second. We're going to need an equals 
we're going to need a number to check and we're going to need the item number of I'm going to change this to primes okay so we've got these blocks here so what we want to check every time we want to do the number to check mod the item number of primes now I'm going to change this I'm going to add in a counter into here all right what does this block mean well the number to check is the number we want to see if it's prime or not mod basically gives us a result of the remainder. So for example, if we were to do uh, eight mod three, then eight divided by three, well, you get two with a remainder of two. So it would return a value of two. That's the remainder. Another example for mod three, four divided by three, well, I can fit one in with one left over. So the mod would be one. So this is going to give us the remainder. Okay, so it's going to do the number we want to check. Let's say the number is 11. And then it's going to divide it by, and this is the bit here. This is the list of primes. And it's going to find whatever this counter is, it's going to find that number. So if the counter was four, it would look for the fourth prime along and it would use that one. This is going to help us cycle through each one of the prime numbers. So we want to check if the remainder is zero, because if the remainder is zero, then it's a factor. The only time you get a remainder of zero is when it divides in perfectly. And if it divides in perfectly, then it can't be a prime number. So that's our logic. Our logic is if you can divide one of these prime numbers into the number to check and there is no remainder, then, well, we know straight away we can add the number to check to not primes. Otherwise, we want to change the counter by one because we want it to move down to the next number. So it's going to keep moving down, down, down as it loops through this code. Another way that I think, another thing that I think is important for efficiency is once it's checked and it knows that it's not prime, we don't want it to keep going through all of the other prime numbers. That takes time. So we're going to immediately set counter to the length of primes that basically says okay move counter to the bottom of the la the, li the list and then it breaks us out of this repeat so the next part of the code and we're going to be careful here about where we put it we've done this repeat until counter equals length of primes after that what we want to then do is set the counter just in here, back to zero because it needs to get ready for the next one. We then need to say, and this is another bit of logic here, so bear with me because this is quite long. And we're going to take a not block out and we're going to take out a contains from the list. So This bit of code says, does the not primes contains the number to check? In other words, have we put the number we're checking into not prime? If we have, then we want to ignore it. But if it's not in the number to check, then it must be a prime. Let me try and explain that again. If we've gone through this whole process and we haven't put it into the not primes list, then by default, it must be a prime number. So that's why we can then add our number to the primes. Okay, it's trying to run the code at the moment, but it's not allowed to yet because it won't work. The final thing we need to do is we need to change the counter, no, change the number to check by one. We're going to change that to loop through. Okay, let's see if this works. So we click the green flag and instantly, it's so quick, it gives us all the prime numbers and all the not primes. It's sorted them into two lists. Quite straightforward. We can now change that number to check to say 100. And then run it again. And it updates. Now, you'll notice 
that it's repeated the lists. So I don't like that. So let's have it so that when we click the green flag, it deletes everything. There we go. So when I run it now, now if I got it to delete, you'll see that it, the counter just goes crazy and it runs and runs and runs and nothing happens. This is something that I found to do with the refresh. Now here, when you click the green flag, it deletes everything, but it deletes it before or straight away after we've just added two to it. So if you like, it does this, then it deletes it and then it gets into a bit of a loop. So the way I've figured that out is to just wait one second at the top of our code. So now when we run it, Okay, so there we go. Works a little bit a bit better. So it gives us that one second delay, but it means that it wipes it and then does it perfectly. Okay, that is a very complicated program, but actually it's a very short program. Not much code to it, and yet we can now change that number to whatever we want. And we could even ask the question. So we can ask at the start, uh, what number shall I search to? And then put the answer in here so that then... What number shall I search? I might have to move Scratch Cat around. Let's try and move him so we can see asking the question. There we go. What number shall I search to? Can you search to 3000, please, Scratch Cat? And there we go. Straight away, pretty quickly, 430 primes, 2568 non primes. Remember, it starts from two. Well, it starts from three, but two is already in there. And it doesn't actually, at the moment, do 3000. So when it gets to 3000, it stops. I'm going to leave that with you. I'm sure you know, you might know how to make sure that it includes that one as well. You might just need to change something over here, just change something very, uh, very minor. Uh, you can also do loads more with this too. So you could have a game. So this could run in the background when you're starting a game and then have a great game that says, can you predict whether this is a prime number or not? And it could pop up with a prime number or not prime and you have to guess if it's prime or not. Or you could type in a number and it will tell you if it's prime or not. So we could actually, you could type in a six digit number and then it waits a second and says, yeah, that's a prime number because it can check in the list to see if it contains it. Loads of really cool things. Also, you can have a real investigation into these prime numbers, see if you can spot any patterns. If you do spot any patterns, then the mathematics world will want to hear about it because we haven't found very many patterns in the primes. So there you go. Really nice, cool project that shows you that some of these really complicated problems that have existed for many years with prime numbers can now be solved really simply with a click of a mouse and uh, we'll see you soon for the next one see you soon <laughs>